Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I uh, hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving and all that. I uh, I know I did. Anyway, um, I got another video for you guys today. So check out what I got here. So I got some carburetors. I got some cylinders. Handful ported, handful not. I got another cylinder back here. Uh, I've got some intake manifolds, whatever you want to call them. Several different kinds. I've got some reed valves sitting here. I've got some reed boxes sitting here. So what we're going to go over today is we're going to kind of explain different parts and different sizes and what they do with reed valves, with boxes, with intake ports, the whole nine yards. And then I'm going to explain essentially what the worst setup would look like for an intake setup and kind of what I see a lot actually versus what would be an ideal setup and what's going to give you the most power because when we're trying to work with our engine or two stroke we're always buying parts we're spending money and we're looking for every little bit of horsepower we can milk out of these things because i'm going to be honest with you the old china girl cylinders don't really put out much so the the better you you can fine tune your system to flow better be more efficient and give better results more power is what we all hope for and strive for and motorized bikes and everything right because that's that's the fun in it trying to just build a little motor to be fast so anyway uh we got three carburetors here today our star of the show as always the nt carburetor uh tiny but mighty right no just kidding this thing's kind of useless simple to tune but not much power coming out of that uh and then we have this is a ktm 50 clone carb it's a 19 millimeter uh uh port there venturi whatever you want to call it um, this is a nice carb. It gets the job done except for these screws strip out easily in the bowl and on top. So 20 bucks, it gets the job done. Easy to tune. One of my favorites. It was my first fast carb I ran. Uh, I believe this is a Makuni VM20 or 24. I can't quite remember. I ordered it a while ago and haven't actually ran it. So I just have it and it's uh, got a gigantic port on it. Uh, so anyway, um, here I got a ported cylinder. This, uh, hold on one second, I threaded these in and forgot that I did. I don't need to unthread them. This is actually a, a custom reed valve I built out of a uh, KTM SX50, or no, SX65 V Force reed valve. One second here. Come on. This is like that B-roll stuff that everybody talks about. What is he doing? Okay. Well, anyway. So, I matched the box to the port, as you can see there, to allow quite a bit of flow for a decent-sized carburetor. Um, but it's also a gigantic reed valve. Well, anyway, so we got a large port... We got a port that, this is custom, right? So I actually milled the entire, let me pull this gasket off here. I milled down the intake to a quite a bit flatter surface than it was stock. So I could fit this Oz reed closer to the intake. And then I actually shaved the intake of the Oz reed down. So I'm looking to tighten up the, uh, the system and make less volume in the intake track. This is another one that I used the same reed valve on. This guy here, like that, right? Uh, and then this one's just a stock 49 millimeter cylinder. Um, just has a stock port. Over here I got, this is a stock 40 millimeter intake that would go to an NT carb, but I cut it down and uh, fluted it for sticking a hose over so I could run it with a 19 millimeter carb because they're about the same size. This is a VM18 uh, 23 millimeter OD uh, spigot carb dealy port, you know, or intake manifold I should call it. And then this is the intake manifold that I actually built for this reed box to run that. But it's a good example. I built it. It's kind of rusty actually. Um, right here we have just a, uh, I can't remember, it was an aftermarket reed valve that I bought that I took apart because I wanted the flaps off of it, but it didn't flow very good. It had kind of smaller, smaller holes in it, so I didn't really like it. Here we have another KTM reed valve. I've got a couple of them. Um, 
Here's a G2 reed valve. Goes in like that. This one I found on eBay somewhere. It was pretty small. I was going to try and uh, make it fit one of these boxes, kind of like a custom fit, and see if I could play with it, but I never got around to it. This is a uh, B and B reed valve. Um, I brought it to the show because this uh, reed valve is very unique, um, and that and the paper's kind of thicker, so it's just an example. Uh, this is a Minarelli reed valve with stainless reed pedals. As you can see, they're real thin, but got to have some variety, right? This is another G2 reed valve, but this one actually has carbon pedals. This is a Osreed box reed valve with plastic pedals. This is another G2, but minus the uh, pedals, so you can see inside that it's running a smaller performance reed valve stuffer and kind of shows you how that looks with it all set up. Kind of gives you an idea what's going on there. And then over here we have just a G2 reed that I cut out so I could get the maximum out of it. Then we have the old RSE 32 millimeter intake reed valve, which these boxes are really kind of shoddy and don't work well. I personally don't prefer them, but I've seen some people get some performance out of them. So they're not complete trash, they're just not my favorite. Then we have an Osreed, the old Osreed. Um, I cut this box way down so it would flow more, have more volume, which if you look at, oh, actually this is my cut one. Oh, actually it is, yeah. I uh, cut the sides out of this Osreed so I could, and I kind of, sorry, I kind of trimmed it right here to uh, flow more than stock. And then this is just a GT90 reed valve for a 32 millimeter. You can see it fits the, uh, the stock port though. And then a G2 stock. And you can also see it fits the port stock. So anyway. Oh, right. And this was one of the small performance um, carb adapters that goes on the back side of this reed valve like that. All right, so now that we got through all these parts here, I'm going to kind of go over some things. Let's see here. So when you're building an engine, you're looking for as much performance as you can get out of the system. In your system, right, you got a cylinder, reed box, some sort of manifold, this, whatever you want to call it. Uh, some people run a, a spigot carb like this. So you got to have something that connects the uh, deal to your to your carb, right? So what you're looking to do with your entire system is have it basically consistent the sizes all the way through the system because when you have consistency you get an optimal flowing system all the way through. And the best example I could give you of this where it's just almost perfect is this carburetor with this intake with this intake port. So as you can see I ported it perfectly to match and then this carburetor is just a 20 millimeter carb that goes on there like that but the system is the exact same size almost the whole way through which I'll just measure it real quick show you guys this is in millimeters so we got okay. oh no that's in inches nope we want millimeters there we go uh, so we got like 19.7 there for the intake port there and then this carburetor is right at 20 so 20, 20 and a half millimeter when you have your intake runner the exact same size all the way through the system the vacuum signal goes through the whole port straight to the carburetor and gives you the best fuel atomization while also giving the most velocity all the way through which is going to amount for quicker acceleration when you pull your throttle back. Uh, it's going to be better fuel atomization, zero lag. It's just going to be the quickest, most efficient system you can have. Now, I go straight to that because that's the point of all this. It's just to have quick, efficient, snappy throttle the whole nine yards, right? The problem we see is that China sends us this. They send us this reed box that fits this carburetor and people strap it to 
a cylinder that's completely stock and we get no acceleration and like 33, 4 miles an hour and people wonder, well, I'm running a reed valve and it's not working. Okay, here's why it's not working. Because this tiny carb with this tiny intake is a really choke point, right? Not moving a lot of air into this huge box with all of this volume that doesn't match the same size there because it goes from small to big. And what happens is it slows down all of the speed in the intake track. But what it also does is your vacuum signal gets kind of slowed down right here to where the carb actually isn't hardly getting any of the vacuum signal where the reed box gets all the vacuum signal and it just acts as a huge problem. You got choke point into huge amount of volume. It just, it's sloppy. It doesn't work right. And it shouldn't be ran that way. The other problem we see is you get people who run this mega gigantic 28 millimeter carb and they stick it on, I don't know, they'll stick it on like an Osreed with an itty bitty little intake and they adapt the small to the big and they make it work but the problem is is you're never going to be able to flow this carburetor at wide open throttle because your choke points right here and this can't flow with that can flow because they're not the same size. So I'd say the biggest don'ts are don't run a huge carb with tiny intake or a small port or whatever because you're never going to flow what this carb can flow through that port if it doesn't match. Now I would say these two ports could probably flow that a little better, but even so, this carb's still too big. This 19 millimeter carb is closer, but it's actually a little bit undersized. These are both ported specifically pretty much at a 21 millimeter carb. Same with this guy here, that's a 21 millimeter carb port job. Um, so, I run this reed box here with this reed valve and this intake manifold on this cylinder. This is a 47 millimeter cylinder. And as you can see, it's got a carbon pedal on the front and the back. So it's got actually four carbon pedals. If, they were, if these were dual flaps, it would be eight total. Um, and it goes into a pretty big area, but the thing is, I'm going to show you the difference here, is this reed box actually takes up most of the volume in there, so there's less air to go through it, which makes it a little bit tighter, versus this reed box. inside of this G2 where there's a ton of volume at the front of the valve and at the back of the valve. So I, I like this valve because it takes up some of the volume but you also get a lot of the flow still. Um, let's see, where to go from here? Uh, <laughs> show you guys this cylinder. So this one's pretty sweet. This is my, my newest 49mm Osreed setup here that I, I shaved that, I shaved the valve to uh, get the, the, the actual, where did it go? Oh, right. To get this as close to the intake as I can get it without it being in the intake. Because when you can get the vacuum signal as close as possible, and it has less distance to travel to go into the cylinder, you get a better response on the throttle, and you're able to achieve higher RPMs because the signal doesn't have to travel through the system as far. That's something to know. Um, I'm actually running this guy here. I have another plate that goes over this with gaskets, but this goes over that, and uh, I tried to match this size as close to that size as I could get it. So 
they'll flow nicely together. It's really hard to see in there. I could probably pull up my phone there real quick. But yeah, you can see that it matches pretty well. So ideally, it's really simple, but at the same time, it's slight, slightly complicated because there's carb size and all the other part sizes. But really what you want to do is you just want to match everything up to where your carb size is close to your manifold size and your manifold size is close to your reed valve size and your reed valve size is real close to your your intake port and if you can get all those really close or all together remotely the same you're gonna have really good results um, my very first like quick engine that I built was literally this this manifold here with this exact carb, not the same one, this one's a brand new one, but, and it was just a cylinder, manifold, rubber hose, carburetor, and it was snappy, and it pulled 47 miles an hour on a 41 tooth at like 11,000 RPMs. I mean, of course, it had good port job, right? So like massive exhaust port or something, you know, raised exhaust port, ported transfers, not this example, that's that's for a man or a reed valve, but uh, just, you know, port work, but it, it worked really good because of the same size, and then this one works really good because of the same size, so if you can just match up your, your intake port size real close through the whole system, you're going to have good results. Um, I didn't really touch on... Uh, these that much but what makes a stuffer nice is you take up all the useless volume and you're gonna fix it right by tightening up the volume to keep the track very similar so as we've kind of talked about the whole thing is trying to keep the track the same all the way through that's what this does um, versus something like this where you're you go to an open large space um, what else to touch on? I think that's about it, guys. I think that pretty much covers it. Just same size carb all the way through the system to the port, you know. You don't want to go gigantic, but you also don't want to go too small. Um, that's about it. I think that's what I have for you guys today. Hope you guys liked the video. I hope that whatever you're doing you're riding safe and uh not like me without a helmet and yeah have a good one enjoy um see you guys later